Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. I've been in the lab and I decided to craft together the scariest possible team with the new Hisuian mons we have access to, and this is what we've got. The forecast calls for some rain and some destruction, let's get into it. So you actually may have noticed my opponent is working with a mono steel team. Now it's super interesting, however, my team doesn't match up that well against that. Claude Sire is my only dude with a ground move, and overall it's looking like it's going to be a crazy matchup. So. I decided to lead off with the Claudia, and I'm thinking I have no reason to go for Toxic Spikes, that's basically just for uh, Overquill's Bar Barrage. No real need for Stealth Rock other than breaking potential Focus Actus, so on turn 1, I'm like, fuck it, we're gonna be sleepy early, I'm gonna go for that Yawn, put some pressure on whatever he decides to do, and in comes the Hammer. So, I imagine this thing is here to likely set up Stealth Rock of its own, however this thing does take the Yawn, and now it kind of puts it in a situation where, okay, do they stay in, take the Sleep, um, and try to set up that Stealth Rock, or basically go for the Terra Flying, potentially avoid the Earthquake. Regardless, I just decide to stay in, go for that Earthquake, and just kind of scout. Turns out, they bring in Slim Jim, and of course, this is a problematic Pokemon in that my only super effective move on all these Steel types, pretty much, <laughs> is Earthquake. However, fucking Jim over here just eats it up, so he just munches on a quick Quake, and I decide to dip on out of here. Claudia does look super useful uh, for the remainder of this match, I don't want to take any unnecessary damage, so I decide to bring in... The absolute legend, check please, this man has the bill covered, as you can see. So this thing actually ends up going for the Shed Tail. That is wildly unfortunate, because now this is going to give them a ton of momentum, switch into whatever they want against Pelipper, and then be behind the Substitute. So Shed Tail, with that Citrus Berry, is going to make it so that thing can potentially Shed Tail later. And they decide to go into the very scary threat that is Golden Go. Behind the Substitute, I'm looking like I'm in a bad spot. This cinnamon toast crunch ass motherfucker is trying to convince me that cereal is part of a well-balanced breakfast. However, you know what is also part of a well-balanced breakfast is this ground terror. I'm gonna go for that ground terror predicting the thunderbolt here. If there's any time for me to use my terror, I, it's basically now to try to gain some momentum back because this thing can basically, you know, be a huge problem. Plus, you know, Pelipper is a, a massive part of my team being able to set up that rain. So I go for that ground terror, get a big old bull on the top of my head, young bull cut, as they do actually end up going for the Thunder Wave. Regardless, it still works out. They probably expected the switch there. Uh, but this now allows me to basically fire off a Surf, get rid of that Substitute, and now Golden Go is a whole lot less scary. Uh, but I'm still in a position where now a Make It Rain does hurt, and I also, I also can't really knock this thing out with the Pelipper. So my plan is to bring in the Bass. The reason for that is I'm expecting to Make It Rain. I know I come in, resist that, and then be able to outspeed with my Swift Swim ability, and then just tear this thing to fucking bits. Uh, with a water attack. So it does go for that make it rain. It is double raining on the battlefield both in coins, bitches, and rain. I guess it's triple raining, but <laughs> I now can just outspeed this thing uh, after taking some chip from that. A liquidation choice banded in the rain should definitely be enough to kill the Golden Go if it's not Focus Ash. So I go for that liquidation, do outspeed, nothing wants to switch into that, and that is going to take care of actually one of the biggest threats on the field. So I'm feeling good about that, and now they get a free switch into whatever they want, and it turns out young Sheldon comes in. And this thing is annoying because it definitely resists a lot of the moves that I have on this team. So I do want to conserve Basque Legion. Of course, I don't really have any business staying in here and getting chipped with that liquidation, so I decide to switch into uh, Hisuian Samurott, who is actually amazing, by the way. I come in, I'm actually Assault Vested, so I'm able to take a Draco Meteor, and that does, that does a lot. With the Assault Vest, honestly, that still hurts a shit ton. Uh, but now my plan is basically to go for the Ceaseless Edge. I want to be able to get some spikes up. The reason for that, break Focus Sashes, and also it's just really good against their team. So I go for that Ceaseless Edge, uh, which is boosted by the Sharpness ability, and does set up spikes upon hitting. So I get that off, uh, Slim Jim comes in, does knock it down to about half, and then just sprinkle some Legos on their side of the field for their bare feet later. So now I've got myself a decision. I can go for the Sacred Sword, it is boosted by Sharpness, but instead I decide to go for that Ceaseless Edge. I want the two layers of spikes up. However, I just end up missing, and now I just die to a body press. So I should have clicked the sword move, and now I pay the price. I honestly didn't even realize Ceaseless Edge can miss. It's actually 90%, and that sucks. I have to deal with just, you know, one layer of spikes on the battlefield, but that should be fine. Uh, because Samurai's Death now allows uh, Basque Legion just to come in for free, and again, this thing absolutely tears shit up with a choice band liquidation. You honestly don't even need to click Wave Crash most of the time, uh, especially in the rain. Liquidation is definitely going to kill the Slim Jim, and no more Shed Tailing for you, mister. That shit is uh, very scary, and now it's gone, so love to see it. 
However, the rain does stop, so the battlefield dries up, and I do still have Pelipper around, so I, I, I'm definitely going to want to be able to get that back up. Uh, as now on the free switch, they decide to bring in the um, the Tinkaton. Now, this thing is has a couple different things it could do. I decided just to go into Claude Sire. I'm thinking this thing probably just sets up hazards here, but I don't want to risk anything else other than Claudia. I decided to bring this thing in. I do actually have free range with my Earthquake now, but I come in on a Gigaton Hammer. That is going to do a dick load of damage. Uh, but luckily, this thing can't use it twice in a row. So now I'm in a spot where I can basically fire off a free Earthquake without worrying about a fucking Slim Jim coming in and eating it. Um, or I can consider going for the Yawn. I'm actually expecting them to switch, so I do go for that Yawn. However, they end up staying in. Uh, nothing really wants to switch into an Earthquake, so that Stealth Rock does make sense. Uh, but I get the Yawn off. And now this thing, it's put in a position where it has quite the decision to make. Where either they stay in, they can finish me off with a Gigaton Hammer. Or they can switch out and not worry about being put to sleep. If they go for that Gigaton Hammer, they do grab the kill. Um, but then they get put to sleep. So I decide just to switch into Pelipper. If they decide to go for pretty much any move, this kind of covers for it, uh, because I do know that Pelipper can just come in, get that rain up, and that's kind of all I'm worried about. With that Damp Rock, the rain should stick around for almost the remainder of the match here. So uh, they do go for that Gigaton Hammer. I am actually bold uh, in max HP, so I know that I can definitely take that, and I do, and now this thing gets put to sleep. So the Yawn does its thing, and now I'm basically thinking I need to get some chip off on this thing, or if it could just stay asleep long enough for me to be able to take it out, it should be fine. I believe two surfs behind the rain should do it, uh, as it definitely does. So all I need is this thing to stay asleep one more turn. It actually ends up waking up and goes for that play rough. Now it turns out I actually end up living that, which, you know, kind of is a little bit weird, because if I died there, then I can just get Basket Legion in quicker or Overquill to be able to take care of that Swift Swim. Um, for as maximum amount of turns as possible, but regardless, down goes the Tinkaton, and now in comes the Lucario, who likely just has the extreme speed anyway, uh, so speed control isn't a super big issue, but I basically just decided to let Pelipper go down here, and just kind of work with the amount of rain turns that I have left, so... Uh, the extreme speed does come out, I don't really know what type of Lucario this is actually going to be, but what I do know is I have a fast-ass pufferfish, but I'm reluctant to try to use Ballin yet, because I know that that thing is super valuable uh, in this late game, and instead I decide to go back into Claudia. I can still go for that Earthquake if I can take an attack from this thing, um, it just, I just don't know what type of Lucario this really is. It ends up going for the Flash Cannon here, which shows me it is going to be special. Luckily, Claudia is actually specially defensive, and now this allows me to go for that EQ, and that is going to knock it out, because even if it was Focus Sash, which I imagine it was, the spikes take care of it, and now Claudia, with her big-ass bulbous tail, <laughs> is doing exactly uh, what we needed it to do. So, now they're down to two Pokemon. They've got the Heatran, and they have the Hisuian Gudra. Uh, both of which are very scary, however, the Hussein and Gudra is kind of my main threat at this point. So, uh, now I'm thinking that Earth Power is pretty much obvious at this point. There's basically nothing else to really go for against uh, Claude Sire here, so I decide to switch into Young Papa Smurf. Thunderous comes in, looking buff as shit, uh, and I do predict that Earth Power correctly. Uh, however, he tried generally pretty bulky-ass Lava Frog, sh should be able to take a few Thunderbolts from me. Um, I, I really wanted to be able to get in one of my Swift Swimmers there, but it was just too risky against the Earth Power. And I had this thing here for pretty much just this situation. So, uh, I'm going to go for that Thunderbolt just to get some chip here. And we're also going to notice that the rain is withering away. However, I should actually be faster on on my Water Mons regardless, but that extra water damage is always nice, but you still don't know what kind of they're working with. So. Uh, that Thunderbolt doesn't do a whole lot. You're also going to note that the Flamethrower doesn't do a whole lot either. And that's because it's damp as shit out here. And uh, the rain does help out with that what, that fire damage. And now, knowing that I can take any attack from that thing, I actually decide to go for the Nasty Plot. So, they're actually going to end up switching into the Gudra here. This thing is still at full health. You know, it gets a little mi minuscule bit of chip from that spike. Uh, but, I get that Nasty Plot up. And plus, I should be able to outspeed this thing easily. It's a fucking snail, and he's sad over there. And he's chilling in the rain, and he's having a bad day. However, I don't have really anything that hurts this thing, other than just Thunderbolt for my best amount of damage. Uh, but with that, the special defense on this thing is just off the damn charts. But I do just want to go for that Thunderbolt. The chip is important at this point. And as you're going to see, it actually goes first, but misses the Draco Meteor. I just got outsped by a goddamn snail. And I'm thinking to myself, is this a choice scarfed Hisuian Gudra? It has to be. Because literally, <laughs> literally, what the hell is going on over here? And that uh, is definitely not something I expected. But now they outspeed. 
uh, and do finish me off with that Draco Meteor. So that first one was actually a pretty big miss. It allowed me to get uh, the chip off that I needed. Um, and now this thing's sitting at minus two special attack. So it's locked into Draco Meteor. We know that for sure. Uh, and Quillfish should be able to just be able to tank hits from this thing. So pointy ass Ballin gets switched in, ready to do his job. And at this point, Crunch is kind of my best bet against both of them. Uh, they do end up switching out the Gudra because actually with the Choice Scarf, that thing should be able to outspeed later. Um, and Heatran does come in. I should be able to outspeed the Heatran though, especially coming in on a Crunch here does allow for the two hit KO. Uh, which it does live the first one with you know a sliver of hp uh, but with that life orb easy to hit ko here and now it kind of puts me in a spot where it's just me against a choice scarf hisuian gudra which is definitely something i never thought i was gonna say ever there's got to be a unique sentence <laughs> so uh, i just go for one more crunch here that is gonna finish off the heat train and now the gudra is in a spot where it definitely would love to be able to click that draco meteor but i still do have pokemon like the basky legion left uh, who is definitely going to benefit from the fact that they dropped their special attack uh, with that Draco Meteor. So, Gudra comes in, takes some more crucial spikes, uh, and at this point, this thing is kind of forced to go for anything other than the Draco Meteor. Does go for that Thunderbolt, luckily, no critical hit, able to live that just barely, uh, and then the Crunch finishes it off. So, very wild time getting outsped by the Snail Gudra, but uh, regardless, that's going to be the end of the match. And that was a super fun one. I really like this guy's team with that mono steel. It's definitely crazy to work around uh, with my squad. And it turned out to be a really good match. So let me know what you guys thought. Thank you guys very much for that support. I appreciate it if you hit that like button. And all the love is definitely amazing. See you guys later.